To forget about names, we need to transform our current representation of O expressions, the exp data type, into a different one that drops the names and just remembers these numbers that we figured out we can predict. That is, we're going to have a compiler. A compiler translates a program from one language to another language. In this case, we're translating from the exp language to a new expd language. So this expd abstract syntax is just like exp, but where exp had IDE with symbol names, we're going to have an atd with numeric positions. And these positions are called lexical addresses because they rely on lexical scope and they tell us the address of where the variable is going to be in the environment. Since we don't need function names to look up, we also don't need them on the function side. A function still has some argument, which we used to remember a name for, now we just don't need the name so we don't record anything. But of course a function still has a body that might refer to the variable that is the argument to the function. So to show some examples, here I'm using these black boxes, as we have used before, that surround a, a little bit of mo code and that they just mean the parsed form of that mo code. Now I'm also going to use some orange boxes, which represent a hypothetical parse function that takes a mo-like form and gets an expert D, just to write these examples. So all I'm saying here is that 1 in exp compiles to 1 in exp D, 1 plus 2 also compiles over with no real changes. But if our whole program is just x, now there is no good number to replace for x because this x is a free variable. And so our compiler is going to complain instead of leaving it to the interpreter. The compiler in this case will complain, free identifier, and not produce a translation of this program. On the other hand, if we have an x inside of a function where x is the argument, then we know that when we get to that x it's going to be at position 0. It's going to be the first thing in the environment. So we will compile this function expression to a function xd form of the expression where we use at 0 in place of x and we just drop the name of the argument in the function form. Or one more example, if we have x plus y in the body of a function that takes x in the body of a function that takes y, that means x will be at position 0, while y will be at position 1. No matter when this function is called or how this function is called, we know that these will be the locations of those variables.